In a previous video I showed you this lamp which I described as the next generation LED lamp because it was very interesting. It had taken the concept of the LED filaments with the string of LEDs up on a piece of glass or metal and it used that technique to put them onto a glass substrate, a square section with the LEDs up either side. And a chap called John has pointed out that uh, AliExpress has a new style of lamp, it's evolved again and he would got some so he sent me one. And I've already decapped it here, so uh, here's what's inside. And it does appear to be a piece of glass again, but a circular piece of glass. And whereas, uh, where's my notepad? Whereas with the, uh, the square panel, it had the connections at the corners, and then it had a string of LEDs going uh, from corner to corner. Uh, and it had two sets of those, so there was actually a... Uh, 2 times 18 on that side, 2 times 18 on that side, and likewise on other sides to give effectively uh, 4 strings of 36 LEDs. So that's the 18 that way and then 18 that way to the other connection. So 4 times 36 LEDs, typically with a voltage of about 108 volts. And the first lamps were not really optimised for uh, 120 volt, they were kind of aimed at the 220 volt market. This one is very different. It has, well, it's similar, but it's quite stylish in a way. It has an electrode up at each side, and then it's got a circle of LED chips going round, actually three circles on each side, of 25 chips, said Clive, drawing them very badly indeed. So that's effectively got um, six circuits, times 25. And that gives a typical forward voltage of around about 75 volts, which is very similar to the LED filaments, which suggests they may actually be using the LED filament optimised drivers. So let me plug this in and show you it up close. This uh, lower voltage, forward voltage, will also allow the use of um, uh, these lamps probably on 120 volts, I'm guessing. Let's uh, hold this up so you can actually see what I'm talking about, these chips here. So if you, you want, you could pause that and count them if you wish, but trust me when I say there's actually six rows, top to bottom, six circles, half circles, of 25 chips. It's quite a neat lamp. It's also interesting that if you look at the pattern of dots here, the phosphor dots, and then you tilt the lamp sideways, you can see the blue glow emitting along the inside of the glass. I think that pattern of dots is designed to um, basically convert that blue light that would be wasted inside otherwise and create fill, create a sort of fill-in area by basically acting like an edge-lit panel um, and just projecting some of the light forward. It's quite interesting. So let's uh, open it up because that's what we want to do. Now this was glued quite well closed. It took a bit of effort to actually open it and this is also glued and I think I'm going to have to actually start cracking plastic and hopefully not break this because it's quite nice. I'd kind of like to keep it. But if it breaks, it breaks. As I've said before, it's better I break mine than you break yours. It's taking one for everyone. Oh, that is definitely not going to go back together now. Uh, right, okay. That's a, that's a start. What if I try and nip this up? I don't want to break the thing. What if I nibble it like that. That's it's definitely promising. Is this going to actually come off the glass or is it really bonded tightly onto that glass? It does seem to be bonded on quite tightly. What have they glued that with? Something that sticks a uh, glass, I think it's glass, to plastic very well. Let's uh, get rid of that completely then. Apparently this lamp is customizable with a pair of snips. So let's uh, nibble my way in here without smashing this completely. And we'll try and get the panel off and then get the driver out. Now, in the previous lamp, the driver was based on a... Oh, that's quite neat. Is that multiple layers of glass? Multiple layers of glass? With the phosphor sandwiched between them? And on top, 
Oh, that's odd. That's very odd. This merits further investigation. This is definitely not going back together. I might as well just go the full hog then. Scrunch, scrunch, nibble, nibble. Ah, what the heck. If I'm going to take it to bits, I might as well take it to bits. Now, the wires are starting to pull on the driver, which is down the middle. I think I'm going to have to pop the driver out now, which will probably involve trying to prise this out. Yes, I've got a sticky plaster over my knuckle again. I have impaled it again. I do that a lot. Okay, so there's one wire. Uh, is that going to make it easier to get out? No, it's not going to make it easier to get out. Uh, I'm going to have to take this off completely, I think. Um, one moment, please. Oh, well, that's not going back together any time soon. Now, I forgot to mention uh, the power rating of this. If I power this up, isn't it stylish? That big glowing disc is approximately 10 watts. That's quite powerful. Uh, and if you consider... Uh, 10 watts, now let's see, should we do the maths? 10 watts divided by 6. So it's going to be, where's the, where's the big calculator? <laughs> 10 watts divided by the 6 circuits equals uh, 1.6 watts a circuit. Uh, so, um, 75 volts, uh, I equals V, uh, P equals IV, I equals P over V, divided by 75 volts, gives about, about 22 milliamps. So they're really, they're aiming at the sort of standard 20 milliamp chips. That's quite interesting. Um, hopefully you actually saw those numbers on the screen. So uh, let's unplug this now, I've completely charged that capacitor up. my quick test down here and pull the parameter out. There we go. Right, so this was a... I'm a bit weird about this now. I think I shall poke it with a sharp pointy thing. Right, that's it. I'm, I'm convinced. Yes, that's it. Discharged. So uh, this was stuffed down the inside of this plastic tube and they had a blob of like goo, silicony goo on it to actually hold it in place as well. Uh, and the wires were, as you'd expect, one, the red one was folded over the, uh, the end and then the, the outer ring, the threaded section, was crimped over it. And the white one was just poked through the end with a little stud pressed in to make that connection. And the circuitry itself is, looks like this. Here's one that I prepared earlier. There, isn't that so much easier to look at than this? So, um... It turns out that it's using this little tiny transistor type thing, which is our old friend Bright Power Strike again. It's a BP9918C, all Chinese data sheet, but that's okay. The, this is not aimed at the likes of us, it's very much for Chinese manufacturers. And if we look at the schematic here, let's see if I can shuffle some of this stuff out of the way. It's textbook. Um, we've got the full bridge rectifier coming in. And that's that there. We've got the smoothing capacitor, which in this case is 400 volts. And I think it's 6.8 microfarad, which is uh, quite reasonable. So that's this capacitor here, 6.8 microfarad. Um, the chip itself has two components. It's got the little capacitor here for generating its uh, VCC supply, and that's this one. Now, this means the chip, ha the chip has to be powered, so it derives its own supply using clever techniques. This is where I wish I could actually read the data sheet. It's all shown as modules, but it's all in Chinese. It'd be quite interesting if it uh, was uh, translatable. I suppose I could translate it, couldn't I? Yes, I could have translated it, but not to worry. It's too late now. There's a current sense resistor which sets how much current will flow through the circuit, and that's this resistor here. Um, the chip itself... And then at the other side of this uh, inductor, and this is just an inductor, so the output is not uh, isolated from the mains, it is effectively referenced to the mains, but it's really well sandwiched in as well. I'll show you afterwards. So we've got the diode here, is this diode here. Uh, this capacitor here is this capacitor here. Uh, and the only difference it's got is they've also got a resistor going across here for 474, 474 zeros, 470k. 
And that, I'm guessing, is just to avoid those little awkward leakage moments that the lamp doesn't quite go out, possibly. Which could well happen. It'll also give it a slight load, uh, even when the LEDs aren't, you know, if something goes wrong. Um, and that's fundamentally it. It's a super simple circuit. It is an absolutely minimalist circuit. I'm trying to think where we saw one of these before, and you know what? I think it was those, uh, I think it was those star-shaped lights. Um, do I have any handy? No, I don't have any handy. I did have some handy. It was the octopusy style lights that had this sort of star of LEDs going out from the in sections from the central core. But that's very interesting. It's very neat. Um, the glass sandwich layer is really interesting because they've got this layer here, which is just a piece of glass. It's got a hole in it. And uh, I think, uh, I'm not sure where the... I'm not sure where the... I'm guessing they've sandwiched, between these two layers of glass, they've sandwiched the um, phosphor. So that must mean it has to be quite accurate, because if they squished it too much, it would uh, change the sort of ratio, the, the layer of the density of the phosphor. But most of the circuitry appears to be in the front piece, but with the active electronics behind, you can see uh, the, the little um, sort of conductive paths going along here with the wires soldered onto them, and then the silicon goop to keep them all uh, in place. And they're going to the end where I'm guessing you've got just the little pads at either end which then bounce around those LEDs around the edge. And the LEDs are on the back of this top layer of glass and then it's got the phosphor sandwich from underneath and then it's got a layer of phosphor printed on the top as well, including these wee lines here. I'm not sure why they... Um, that must be for alignment, I guess. I'm not sure why they've got two lines printed in the top of it like that. Uh, it could well be for a part of the alignment process. Particularly, it's, it does seem to have lots of, sort of, lot of target shapes. But that's quite interesting. The bottom sheet does have that sort of checker plate uh, pattern of the phosphor on it. So, um, yeah. I wonder, I wonder what the process of manufacturing is. But uh, that's uh, the new lamp. And, you know, it looks pretty impressive. I've not given it a long test. I'm not going to give it a long test now. I've taken it completely to bits and it's not necessarily going back together. But I may improvise, I may fudge it back together and make it into a sort of futuristic Mad Max style lamp that just looks like this, with maybe just wires hanging out the back. But yes, that's quite interesting, very interesting indeed. So I'm going to try another feature now to end this video. Uh, have I covered everything I needed to cover? Yes, I have. Uh, I'm going to try another feature. I'm going to use that facility in YouTube now that I can put this little image here and this will be, uh, if you click that, it subscribes to the channel. And this video here is just extra spooky because this video here is targeted individually at everybody who watches the video. Um, it'll even target at me. Uh, this is a video from my collection of videos, but it will be optimised to what your previous search history is. That's a bit creepy, isn't it? Uh, 